We've all heard of the proverbial lucky pair of underwear, right? The ones you can't leave home without before an interview or big date. So if we believe in the lucky ones, why not unlucky ones? Maybe a pair so unlucky that they can be described as cursed because anyone who wears them suffers terrible fates. Alright, I admit it's not the best analogy, but you get my point, right? If we believe that certain things can be lucky, then there must surely be unlucky things out there to counter the balance. So when we see a post online about a picture, a poem, a doll, or hey, even a pair of undies that might be cursed, why is it so hard for us to even regard them as slightly possible? The next two stories are going to be about items that are so cursed that they have grown tremendously in popularity because of the horrors that they produce. And no, they have absolutely nothing to do with underwear. So are you ready? Then take my hand, hold it tight, and let's walk into the darkness together. Loana Constantinescu, or as she is most commonly known, Loana the Bloodthirster, was a 27-year-old woman who lived in a predominantly Christian city named Tiramisuara in Romania. This story takes place in 1909, and thanks to history books, I think we are all well aware of how religions in the past, and a few now, worked. If you weren't with them, then you were against them, and boy were they against you. Loana happened to be a Zoroastrian. Zoroastrianism is an ancient pagan religion that originated in Persia and spread to the point where it's still practiced by millions of people to this day, although nowadays most of its following seems to be in East Asia. So, as I'm sure you can imagine, when word spread of Loana's religious beliefs, it was met with negativity and intolerance. People all over the city began to bully her, and two of the city's ministers began to turn their congregations on her even further by claiming that Loana would drink the blood of small children in order to commune with the devil and other malevolent entities. With their help, the intolerance for Loana and her religion grew to such a point that on October 21st of that year, an angry mob formed, and with the ministers egging them on, they stormed Loana's home, dragged her outside, and beat her to within an inch of her life. Now, I'm not exactly sure how she got to a hospital. I'm guessing maybe a good Samaritan that didn't agree with what was happening took her, or maybe a family member. But Loana was able to get some immediate care, this is where the story starts to take a turn into the really weird, though. No one knows why she did this, but after two days in the hospital, Loana decides to check herself out and return home. Keep in mind that she can probably barely move considering the condition that the mob left her in. So she must have been pretty determined to walk out of that hospital as soon as possible. Once she returned home, no one hears from her for about a day, and then suddenly they find her dead. But not because of the serious injuries that she had endured from the beating. Loana was found laying down with her arms crossed over her chest and with deep cuts in her arms and legs that were not from the beating. They also found a goblet near her that had been stained with blood. They found an altar, ritual herbs, effigies, and what they called occult symbols. Apparently, Loana decided to spend her last moments on this earth performing a self-sacrificing ritual for revenge, where she would cut herself, fill up her goblet with the blood from the wounds, and then drink it. The official cause of death was actually found to be the large amount of blood loss that she endured, combined with an internal shock from consuming such a large amount of blood. Apparently, her stomach was really full of blood, so it seems that she did drink it all. And if that wasn't weird enough for you, it does get a lot weirder. 
Around a year after Loana's passing, the two ministers that had tortured her so much by calling her things like Satan worshiper and then turning others on her, both contracted a rare blood-borne disease and died shortly after that. Two of the people who were involved in her beating also passed away around the same time as the ministers, one due to a freak accident where a tree fell on him and killed him, while the other one perished along with his wife and children in a house fire. Now, when they found Loanna, the authorities took a picture of her dead body, and this picture has been making the rounds online for years. The problem is that people consider the picture to be cursed. There are plenty of people out there who claim that after seeing the picture, they have suffered bouts of sleep paralysis, terrible nightmares where Loanna appears and tries to kill them. They claim that they wake up with bruises on their arms and legs, and some even claim to have seen Loanna appear in the flesh, so to say. Now, I have to say, I've seen the picture a few times, some by accident, some willingly, but Loanna has never bothered me after. Not that I'm complaining. I'm not. I'm pretty happy about that. Um, one thing I do find weird about the picture is that when you look at it, after this huge beating that she had, there are no bruises on her. So she died without a bruise in sight, apparently, and she had suffered this tremendous beating. But anyway, let's get ready to jump ahead on the video if you want to skip the picture, because you guys are about to get to see it for yourselves. Are you ready? Here it comes. In Japan, sometime during the 1900s, there lived a young boy named Tomino. Tomino's family consisted of his mother, his father, an older sister, and a younger one. Unfortunately, Tomino had suffered a severe disability throughout his life which kept him confined to a wheelchair. This, of course, can be hard on anyone, and it's said that Tomino suffered greatly because of it. To cope with all of these overpowering emotions that he was feeling, Tamino began to write poetry where he poured out his heart and soul. On one occasion, when Tamino was feeling particularly depressed, he wrote a chilling poem that described his journey through hell and what he saw and felt there. When his mother and father found the poem, they became horrified and outraged that Tamino would write such a thing. Now keep in mind that in Japan, a lot of the culture was against these strong expressions of emotion, especially these types of emotions. So their outrage was sort of expected. Now as punishment for his audacity, Tomino's parents took him to their home's basement and left him there without food or water. The basement was dark and frigid, and with his disability, all little Tomino could do was just sit there. Eventually, due to the basement's conditions and the lack of food and water, Tomino contracted bronchitis and grew weaker and weaker until he perished. It's said that all the sorrow, rage, and desperation that Tomino felt as he lingered in that basement, slowly dying, was imprinted onto the poem in the form of a curse that now will plague anyone who dares to read it out loud, causing them physical and vehicular accidents, sickness, permanent loss of their voice, and even death. So the curse's story really took off in 1974 when there was a movie released named To Die on the Countryside. The movie's director, Terayama Suji, took strong inspiration for the movie from the poem Tomino's Hell. On May 4, 1983, at the age of 47, Terayama passed away from cirrhosis of the liver, and most people claimed that it was the poem and how closely he had worked with it that brought it on. There are also two other stories, one of a group of college kids and another of a young girl, 
who all read the poem and died shortly after. However, the details of these stories are sketchy and barely there. In the 1980s, there was this big fad in Japan where people would record themselves and they read the poem out loud. And apparently most of them did not die, which is great. But it also led to people now believing that the curse is actually selective and only affecting certain people who read it while letting go others who do so unscathed. However, no one really knows what actually triggers it. The story I told you about Tamino in the beginning has actually been proven to be fake as well, since the poem was actually written by a 27-year-old man named Saijo Yasuo in 1919. Yasuo was a popular children's author who had suffered the loss of his father when he wrote the poem. But it seems that creepy was just his style, since a lot of the poems and songs that he wrote for the children tended to be written in the same style as Tomino's Hell. That doesn't prove that the poem is not cursed, but it does make the story sound a little less convincing, right? Okay, so the plan here was for me to read the poem out loud to you. But I have not found a single thing stating what happens to those who listen to others read the poem. And if the death of those college kids is true, it may have been that only one read it while the others listened and it ended up affecting all of them. And I would never put any of my lovely viewers in jeopardy. Besides that, with my luck, if it does affect me, I'll probably be one of the ones who loses their voice forever, and then I'd have to resort to an AI voice for these videos, and no one wants that, right? So I've decided to instead post the poem here for you to mentally read on screen if you choose to, which seems to be 100% safe from what I've read and experienced because by now I've mentally read it about 20 different times and with different translations. The one I'm going to put up here is the one I found on wikiHow and it seems to be the most accurately translated version of it. So here we go. Okay, so that's it for today. Do you believe in these objects? Or do you even believe in cursed objects? Let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know where you're from and if you found me through a bill. You can help my small channel grow by sharing it with others who love creepy, maybe true, cursed object stories just like us. And as always, please remember to like if you liked and subscribe if you want more. I'll see you next time.